Coming up on today's Lockdown Dodgers, MLB and the players met for five hours. Didn't come up with a deal, but they are moving towards a deal, maybe, hopefully. And some free agents the Dodgers should key in on after the lockout ends. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. <laughs> You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked on, your team every day. This is a daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. And that smart fans' perspective comes from me, Vince Samperio, Chavez Ravine Fiends, and Jeff Snyder of Baseball Essential, who will not be in today. We're both lifelong Dodger fans that actually got to experience the other side of the coin uh, and be media members, be in the locker room, talk to players. But we are able to keep our... Both sides, both sides of the coin here. Uh, we're all positive here at Locked On Dodgers for the most part. And that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to get into some positive vibes. The players and the owners met on Monday for a total of five hours. They did not end the lockout, but they are negotiating. They plan to speak again here on Tuesday, and they plan to continue to speak until a deal is done, I would imagine. Hopefully that's the, that's the plan there. Going to talk about, a little bit about that, what concessions were made so far and how far they are apart, and then get into some free agents that we've talked about throughout this offseason that maybe the Dodgers should for sure target once the lockout is over because, like I mentioned on yesterday's show, I would imagine it's going to be a frenzy once the lockout is over and everyone's going to be scrambling to find a team. So why not be uh, on, the, on the side of being very – smart and thoughtful and being having guys ready uh, to call up once that lockout is over. But before we get into all that, I just want to thank you and remind you, for those of you that don't know, that you should make Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. So you can listen to us. You can watch us. You can do it all every Monday through Friday for free. So please check us out. Make us your first listen of the day every day. Let's take a look. So, like I said, MLB and the Player Association met for about five hours. Not a lot of uh, concessions. You know, obviously, from what we've known, what we've seen, the owners have yet to concede anything, and the players have already backed off and conceded and negotiated to a certain extent. What we saw yesterday was MLB finally did uh, make some concessions, but not really... I don't know if they're in good faith territory yet. They are very far apart on a few things and they're fine with, you know, giving up some of these little things. But when it comes to the bigger things uh, like the bonus pool for pre-arbitration players, I think the players are asking for 115 million. Now Uh, the owners had offered originally 5 million. And then now after a couple of times, it's up to 20 million Clearly, they're still far apart from what the from what the players want. And, yeah, I don't know. This might be the, the one major sticking point that happens because they're so far apart on it. Um, you know, the owners aren't used to playing the younger players as much. They probably want to keep it that way, obviously. The younger – the game has turned younger recently. A lot more guys are getting called up and playing prominent roles on teams. So, you know, they want to get paid for it because once they hit free agency, they're usually, you know, 26 to 30 range, depending what, when they come up and yeah, they they only have that one major payday. And then now the game, now that the game's closing people out on the backside of their careers a little bit, you know, you really only get that one payday. So you want to get paid early in your career, uh, so you can be able to, you know, maximize your profits personally as a player. So that's where their their biggest difference is right now. Um, and it's, like I said, a huge difference, probably the, the major sticking point. The other thing the league also offered is to do the first four picks of the draft by lottery. 
Uh, the previous proposal was three. I'm not sure exactly what the players ask is there. I know that they want to, you know, eliminate tanking or reduce tanking. And, you know, a lottery, I guess, would help that. But a four-team lottery, you still, if you're in the bottom four, you have a 25% chance of getting that top pick or at least, or you're getting a top four pick. So the incentive to not tank isn't quite there yet still. Because realistically, you get a top four pick, you're going to get somebody that could potentially change a franchise down the line or help, you know, help change a franchise. There's a lot of, you know, number one picks don't always hit, but there are, if you go expand that to number one through four picks and you got a little bit more range to work with and a little bit more, you know, wiggle room in terms of getting a player that can help you out uh, doesn't necessarily help teams say, oh, I don't want to tank anymore. Uh, MLB did withdraw the proposal to reduce minor league roster sizes and that option limit that we talked about the other day of five. Uh, it doesn't matter that, you know, obviously I think there's going to be an, a limit of how many times guys get options. So I think that will come back on the table, but maybe, you know, at a lower number, the players wanted four MLB wanted five that they're close enough there where they can figure it out uh, in terms of the minor league roster sizes. I don't know why they would want to, you know, mess with that too much. Uh, not like they're paying minor leaguers. They're like, they're supposed to now. Now, if, if they want to reduce minor league roster sizes because they're eventually they're going to pay players the way they should, then I guess that would make sense. But uh, I'm not sure what their issue with that particular, you know, or obviously they don't have an issue because they, they withdrew that proposal. Um, and it all really comes down to, yeah, the, the big difference of the pool, the bonus pool money. Um, and it's $115 million to be distributed to about 150 players. Uh, MLB wants to distribute it to about 30 players, which is why their money is lower. Uh, players want the top. Oh, here it is. Players want the top eight picks in the draft to be determined by lottery. Less likely to tank there if you are the worst team in baseball and then you get the number eight pick. That's a lot different than you ended up with the number four pick. So they didn't talk about uh, the competitive or luxury tax. They didn't talk about minimum salary. They didn't talk about well, – those are the two main other points other than the bonus pool. It's the luxury tax. The players want it higher so teams can feel free to spend a little bit more. They want a minimum salary higher so the young players that do come in uh, get a get a bigger piece of the pie because, like we've said before, the game has gone up financially a lot, and the players have not really benefited from that. At least, you know the the younger players in terms of the the minimum salary. You know, obviously, there's guys making thirty, forty million a year, but not every player does that, and most players are out of the league. You know, within five, six years, if they can get that far, and upping that 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 money that they get when they, as soon as they come into the league would really help out some of these guys and, you know, be, be makes more sense to pay them when they need to get paid. So they will meet again on Tuesday. We know that the soft cutoff date is February 28th for the season to not be delayed. Uh, at this point, the way it is, I don't see that happening. You know, I don't see getting done by the 28th. They're still far apart in a few things. They didn't even talk about two of the major issues, but it seems like they're committed to negotiating or at least being in the same room for more than 15 minutes, which is a, a better sign than we've seen in the past. I just wish it didn't take two months for them to get to this point. But, you know, well, that's in the past now. We only focus on the future and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, um, you know, after Tuesday's talks. We'll see if there's any concessions or, or better movement toward a deal. Uh, then we can better see if that's going to, Get done by the 28th, which I, I personally don't think is going to happen, but we'll see. And that's really all we can do uh, as fans. So we're going to talk about some free agents that I should look at after that lockout does is over and does, you know, that CBA does get signed. But first, let's talk about Built Bar. Built Bar, best tasting protein bars. If you're still trying to get your New Year's resolutions going or get back on track, Built Bars can help you out because not only are they great tasting, like a nice little dessert, a nice little candy bar, but they're good for you, and they got the protein for you. If you're trying to hit the gym, get your, get your gains on, they can help you with that. They got a lot of protein. They got low calories, low sugar, low carbs, high fiber. You know, if you need to get regular in your day-to-day -day routine, they can help you out there. They got these built puffs that are really good. They're little marshmallow, basically protein-infused marshmallow covered in chocolate. 
that just sounds delicious, and it is delicious. They got churro flavor, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, a bunch of different flavors. They got a bunch of different flavors. The Built Bar is always coming out with new flavors. So you got to go to Built.com, check it all out, and see what they got and see what's good for you. And right now you get 15% off at Built.com with the promo code LOCK15. So that's 15% off with the promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Go get you some Built Bars. And also go to RockAuto.com because this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now possible for your local chain auto parts store dealership to have all the parts on hand that you need. So why would you want to waste your time, waste your gas? Gas is expensive right now. Driving to a store, they don't even have the part you need. They're going to get it shipped to their store, and then you're going to have to go back, drive again, pick it up from them. Why deal with all that? Why don't you just go to rockauto.com, check everything you have out for your car truck, get the part you need delivered directly to you, and it's going to be cheaper. It's going to be sometimes up to 100% cheaper than the same parts from a chain store or car dealership because rockauto.com is a family business. They've been serving people online for over 20 years, and they've always had reliably low prices for every single customer. You don't have to be a mechanic. You don't have to be anybody special. Everybody gets the same price at rockauto.com, and that's all you got to do. So head over to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there. How did you hear about this box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. I want to thank you for making locked on Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. If you need another thing to listen to, you can check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. All right, let's get into some free agents. We'll split it up into pitchers and position players. And some of these guys we've talked about, whether I've talked about uh, in length for a segment, Jeff's talked about in length for a segment we've mentioned in passing throughout these last few months. Uh, But it's one of those where now, you know, we're getting close, hopefully, to a deal being signed. I mentioned yesterday that's going to be crazy once that deal is signed because there's going to be a bunch of players trying to sign everywhere. And, you know, the Dodgers should have these guys, if they're not already somehow in contact with them, they should figure out how to get in contact with them as soon as they're possible, which I think it is possible. I think we can talk to the agents already. But we'll just run through first base. There's really only one that they should have, and that's Freddie Freeman. You get Freddie Freeman, you change, you know, Everything about your lineup, not everything about your lineup, but you add so much to your lineup and, you know, it's it's a nice addition to the team after the loss of Corey Seager. Uh, it gives you, you know, in case Cody Ballander doesn't get back to uh, some kind of, you know, 2017 to 2019 Cody Ballinger, it gives you a little bit of insurance there. Uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You can move people around. You can get Justin Turner off his feet a little bit more or get Max Muncy in the DH spot. There's a lot to do with, with the team if Freddie Freeman signs. You go the rest of the way at first base, and you know the only other big name that we kind of talked about is Anthony Rizzo. I don't think you're com- – you know, it's not a huge upgrade if you're going by, like, is Anthony Rizzo better than the 26 men on this roster? Then it's an upgrade in that sense. You kind of kind of do the same things that you did that I talked about with Freeman, where you can move Mac Muncy around or you can move him to DH or get Turner off his feet a little bit more. But it, it's not a needle-making move. It's not necessarily a move that you need to make. I don't think it's worth whatever he's going to get paid. Um so, yeah, I, I don't think – and after that, there's just a bunch of guys, but nobody that's really worth it. Albert Pujols is, you know, technically on that list as first baseman. I don't think they bring him back. I think, as we saw through in the season, he started off pretty good, uh, but then after that just kind of became a singles guy and wasn't really – you know, wasn't even mashing lefties as much as he was earlier in the year, and if he was, he was hitting lefties. Uh, wasn't for too much power, so I, I don't know how much he has left in the tank. Uh, you can go, let him go with the Cardinals and let him and Yadier and Wainwright have their last year of finishing in third place together. So go ahead. Let, let's let that happen. Moving to middle infield, there's not a lot that, that's going to, like I said, move the needle in, ter- at, in terms of, like, second baseman, shortstop. There's guys that, that – there's one guy, really, that, that's worth it. That's Carlos Correa, obviously. We've talked about him a lot. Honestly, the more that the offseason has gone, 
uh, the less likely it seemed. You know, there was a point in time early in the offseason when I was like, hey, the Dodgers might go after Carlos Correa, especially after Seager left. But then I think it's a combination of the Freddie Freeman train, kind of hype train, kind of getting rolling a little bit more. Uh, the fact that I, you know, I just don't see them wanting to move Trey Turner again, even if though, even though it's his last year. Uh, the fact that you know Carlos Correa still has that that you know dark cloud over him, uh, especially considering that it was against the Dodgers. So I don't see that happening anymore. Uh, other than the fact that the only way I do see it happening is if nobody's offering them 300 mil and the Dodgers can snake in at a, at a short term high money deal that potentially could get them interested like a four year, $200 million deal, something like that, where, you know, they get out of the deal faster than they want. Uh, you know, Craig could benefit from it because he could become a free agent still in his early thirties and, you know, they could make it work that way. I don't see it happening, but I do think that's the only way it does happen. And then you got Trevor story who I don't think makes the Dodgers better. I don't think he's good enough to push Trey Turner away from shortstop. I don't think he's necessarily good enough for the Dodgers to spend a significant amount of money on based on who they already have, uh, based on the fact that it, it just muddies up. If he plays second base, you know, then you get, what if Lux, what if Gavin Lux does finally break out, you know, Obviously, having too much talent is not the worst thing, but then you basically sign a guy and you're giving him money, and then you get you know a guy who's already on your roster doing just as good as he is potentially, and then you know you're in a weird spot. So I don't feel stories anywhere really going to help the team. Uh, and then after that, up the middle, you just have a bunch of guys that could potentially be utility guys, um, but nobody that really that's going to be an everyday player. You got guys like Josh Harrison, Donovan Solano, Jed Lowry. They can all play multiple positions in the infield. Uh, you go to, over to the shortstop side. You got like Jose Iglesias, Freddie Galvis, Andrelton Simmons, guys that play a little bit more short or, or a little more entrenched at shortstop, but are not going to really change your team and not going to play over Trey Turner, obviously. So up the middle, there's really not a lot. Like I said, I can see Correa on a short-term big money deal. But other than that, I don't think there's anyone. A guy like Josh Harrison is intriguing. Even Donovan Solano, to a certain extent, intriguing. But with Gavin Lux and Chris Taylor and, you know, Zach McKinstry all vying for a role uh, or being similar players in, in that type of role, you'd have to, you know, say, hey, Chris Taylor, you're going to be our everyday second baseman. And then you have – or Gavin Lux, you're the everyday second baseman. And then you, you know – don't believe McKinstry is going to hit like he did early in the year last year. So now you need maybe that second utility player that the Dodgers are used to having, uh, along with Chris Taylor, somebody else. Maybe that's where they look at him, but I don't see that happening there. We move over to third base, and the, the main name is a guy that also can – intriguing in the sense because he is a guy that can play multiple positions. That's Chris Bryant. He played a little first last year. He's played short. He's played third. He's played outfield. Um, obviously a bigger name. I don't think he's going to get the money that people maybe would have expected him to get a few years ago. And a guy that, yeah, he can help the team. Yeah, he'll be better than probably the 20th guy on a 26-man roster, but it's all going to come down to money. And if he's getting big money, the Dodgers aren't going to touch him for a guy that doesn't necessarily have a, a set spot. Now, what they could do, sign him. Hey, your set spot is third base. Hey, JT, we love you, but, you know, we want you to be the DH and and, you know, get you off your feet and make sure that you can last the whole season. That's something that's possible. Or, hey, you know, Chris Bryant wants you to move around, uh, you know, play some outfield, play some infield, uh, and, you know, play some DH, and we want your bat in the lineup, and we'll figure out where to play you. And that's that's also possible, but for the money he might command, like 200 mil plus, I don't think so. If they can get him for under 200 mil or, you know, under 20 mil, 25 mil a season, very possible that they go that route. But, you know, I think somebody's going to throw big money at Chris Bryant. And, it's, you know, it's not at the end of the day, it won't be up to the Dodgers to kind of adjust to that. Uh, because after you get past Chris Bryant at third base or guys that are majority third basemen, you just have a bunch of names. Again, Matt Duffy, Hanser Alberto, Michael Franco, Charlie Culberson, Ronald Torres, Starling Castro. Nobody that is even – Guys that can probably be on the roster at this point, but they're not going to help you out a lot, and they're going to you know, cost money that 
you already have guys. You know, Edwin Rios is coming back. Zach McKintree's, you know, hopefully healthy. Matt Beatty is another bat. There's guys that can play these positions that you don't need to sign anyone for. So uh, we move to the outfield, and to the outfield where we move is really you're not going to get an outfielder, but you're looking at guys that can be DH or be in a, a DH role with maybe a little bit outfield. Guys we've talked about, Kyle Schwarber. Guy we talked about, uh, Nick Castellanos. Guy we haven't talked about, but also up there, Michael Conforto, Jorge, so Jorge Soler. Those are four guys right there that aren't necessarily great at defense, could come in and be in a DH hybrid type role, could really help out. Kyle Schwarber is a guy that can carry an offense for, for periods of time. Nick Castellanos is a guy that can carry an offense for periods of time. Conforto, I'm, I'm not that familiar with them, but his numbers aren't ridiculous eye-popping. Jorge Soler, he can carry you in the series for sure, as we saw in the World Series, World Series MVP. So there's guys like that. <clears throat> you move down to the next tier. You got guys like Eddie Rosario, Tommy Pham, Andrew McCutcheon, who we talked about a little bit. Um, you got Jock Peterson, who we kind of talked about. You know, you signed a one-year deal, Jock Peterson, put him at DH for the majority of the year. You're probably going to get 25, 30 home runs, and that's not going to be a bad thing. And as we saw in the postseason, you know, October is real, although he didn't do too much in the final couple of series or final series, but, you know, he helped them get there uh, early on against the Brewers and he did pretty good against the Dodgers. So there is, you know, a spot for him here. I would imagine he's been hanging out with his former Dodger teammates most of the offseason, probably because he lives in L.A. But, uh, you know, I, I still have a soft stop with Jock Peterson and I wouldn't mind seeing him here again. But after that, you just get into – guys that aren't going to really aren't good enough to be on the roster at the moment. Um, you know, Billy McKinney's on this list. I don't want to see Billy McKinney again. Uh, he, he filled his role and that's where he's at. And you can move to DH real quick and you got guys like Nelson Cruz. And that's pretty much it. After that, you got Mitch Moreland, Pablo Sandoval, Chris Davis, guys that are past their prime or even in their prime weren't necessarily that great or at least great enough for the Dodgers to spend money on. Nelson Cruz is a guy I've always loved. I wouldn't mind seeing him, but I think, you know, at this point with Nelson Cruz, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop with the other shoe being age and not being good. And you don't want to be, the, you don't want to sign him the year that he finally age catches up to him. So out on that. So those are just a list of some of the names. We're going to come back talk about the pitchers that the Dodgers can go after. First, we're going to talk about bet online because bet online football might be over for the year, but basketball is not, and it's full steam ahead for both pro and college hoops. You got the big tournament coming up in March. You got NBA playoffs coming up in April, and for all the latest odds, totals, play performance, props to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Bet online remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to Olympic or Olympics are over, but right into any other coverage and information of new sports or sporting events that come about. So head to the website today on your laptop or mobile device. Learn more about all the trends. Learn more about all the action. And BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, let's finish up with pitchers that the Dodgers could target after the – Lockout ends, um, but first, I want to remind you, thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. Make sure to continue to do that. Make sure to tell your friends to do it. Make sure to check us out every weekday morning. Now, Clayton Kershaw, number one on this list in terms of who I want the Dodgers to sign as soon as the lockout ends uh, for obvious reasons, for various reasons. Clayton Kershaw, at this point, is probably the number three on the Dodgers. You know, if they if they were able to acquire somebody else, maybe even push him down to number four. Uh, but either way, Clayton Kershaw, just the way he went out last season, obviously we don't want him to go out that way. Lifelong Dodger. You need to remain a lifelong Dodger. There's not a lot of players that can hold that claim anymore, and I would love for Clayton Kershaw to be one of one of the ones. And you got guys we've talked about, Carlos Rodon, Zach Greinke, um, you say Kikuchi, you know, that we've talked about those three specifically. All would fill a role. All obviously depends on money. All could settle in into a number three or number four position in the rotation and help the Dodgers. Because as we as we know, Dodgers have Walker Buehler, Julio Diaz, 
a, a fine one too. You know, if those are your top two pitchers, you got, you know, probably top 10, top five of, of duos right there. Both guys that received multiple votes uh, for, for Cy Young last year, but you move past that. And you got Andrew Heaney, who you know have no idea who you're, what you're going to get out of him. And then you got a bunch of young guys. So you know you had Kershaw. Okay, that that's still you're still got a fifth spot that you're not ter- entirely sure what it is. You still got a fourth spot in Andrew Heaney that you're not sure entirely what he is. So a guy like Carlos Rodon, even Zach Greinke, and you say Kikuchi. Kikuchi and Rodon probably more a little bit, you know, higher end, still younger, 29 and 31, respectively. They still got, you know, a chance to either get better or continue to improve. Zach Greinke, you know what you're going to get, but what you're going to get is, you know, five, six innings at around four or five ERA at this point in his career. And if for a number five pitcher, that's your number five pitcher. That's, you know, not a bad thing. A guy that eats innings. We saw last year the Dodgers need guys that can take up innings because they threw a lot of bullpen games last year. And I don't think they can get through another season with that. So that's what you got in starting pitching wise. Uh, there's a couple other names, you know, Michael Pineda, Johnny Cueto, Brett Anderson, nobody that's moving. Uh, nobody that's moving anybody else off a rotation. So that's what you got there. Danny Duffy, who they did trade for, didn't pitch for the Dodgers, probably won't be able to pitch till middle of the season. I guess it's a guy they could maybe say, hey, we, we still want to see what you got, but I don't know if it's worth uh, even throwing that out there for, for, for the time being. And then you move over to relievers. Obviously, Kenley Jansen is, is the top reliever left. Uh, if he wants to be a closer and get – paid like a closer i don't think it's going to be with the dodgers as i've mentioned before but i do think that you know if he figures figures do i want to be a closer on a bad team if that's all that's left offering him or do i want to be you know a reliever on a dodgers team then i do think he can find his way back here i'm not completely ruling that out but i do think you know he this is his chance for a final payday and He's won a World Series. He's made the playoffs a bunch of years in a row. You know, I don't know how big winning is is important to him at this point. Uh, I don't know, you know, if, if being a closer and getting big money is more important than winning. Uh, you know, the Marlins were interested in him, but the Marlins aren't necessarily going to be built for the postseason. They, you know, they could be. They, they could be with, with a lot of the young talent they have, but it's not a guarantee. I know the Phillies were looking at him too, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but you never know. Uh, Kenley Jansen, like I said, if he comes back, it'll be on the Dodgers' terms, not on Kenley Jansen's terms. Then you got guys who we haven't really talked about, Ryan Tapera, Colin McHugh, Andrew Chafin, uh, Richard Rodriguez, Brad Hand, guys that at this point, the way the Dodgers' bullpen set up, you know, Tapera, McHugh, Mate, and Chafin, you know, they probably would serve a role in this Dodgers' bullpen right now. You know, you push a guy like Justin Bro down, you push a guy like uh, Evan Phillips down, and, yeah, they would serve a role on this team, but it's also going to come down to cost. The Dodgers already have a top, you know, for sure, top 10, guaranteed top five potential bullpen right now as it stands um, without adding anybody. So for them to add somebody, it's going to come at their terms, their cost, you know, what they think is going to be worth it or – you know, there's nobody here to break the bank for is what I'm trying to say. And I don't think they will do it. Joe Kelly is also one of those guys. We talked about him. Want to mind Joe Kelly back. I think, he, you know, maybe he would want to help us out on the back end since he was, you know, maybe not worth all the money he got on the front end of those three years that he signed for. So, you know, you never know there. But want to mind Joe Kelly back. He's a fan favorite. Uh, the guys out like Tony Watson, yeah, he can help out, but the Dodgers, like I said, they do have Alex Vesia, lefty. They're getting Caleb Ferguson back, lefty. They got Justin Brewer, who did pretty good last year as a lefty. They got Victor Gonzalez, who's on a mission to get back onto onto the roster. So they got a lot, a lot of lefties. It's probably not worth it to bring some of these other guys. And then, you know, on, on the other side, too, they got a bunch of righties. So I don't see any relievers that are standing out to me to, oh, yes, we need to sign them as soon as the lockout ends, but I do see them maybe adding a couple arms here and there and, and see what happens, even if it's on a minor league deal with an invite spring training. I think that's more than likely to happen. So that's all the free agents that are available that Dodgers could target. Um, there's, they're probably going to sign somebody I didn't mention to either at least a minor league deal with an invite spring training. That's just because the Dodgers are a lot better at scouting and talent and finding talent than I am. So no, no shame in my game there. 
And that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. If you need something to listen to after us, you can check out Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Jeff will be back on tomorrow's show, maybe together. Uh, it's my birthday week, so I'm not entirely sure where I'll be this entire week. So we're trying to make it work. But either way, we'll be back talking Dodgers, talking negotiations between the players and the owners, and hopefully talking a new CBA in the works and on the on the way. Uh, if you want to find us on social media, we are on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Dodgers. DMs are open on both of those accounts. DMs are also open on our personal Twitter. Jeff is on Snydog. I'm at Vince Samperio. Other ways to get a hold of us. You can send us a text, leave us a voicemail at 323-863-5625. You can send us an email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your smart device play podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one.